Hey guys, this is Old Man Wags here with Dirt Killer Pressure Washers. What we're doing today is showing you one of our solar panel detailing kits. This kit specifically is targeting homeowners who want to do maintenance on their own panels. There's nothing wrong with using this if you're a contractor, but it'd also be a really good entry level window cleaning unit. A really good unit to keep around the house if you had a whole lot of glass atrium style windows where everything was just big and exposed in the front. The goal of this kit is to give you as much portability and flexibility in what it is that you're cleaning, but still deliver some near perfect results. What comes with the kit is two DI canisters. We've got our pole extension. We've got the actual brush down here. That's a boar's hair brush. That's so not going to scratch anything. And then we've got our quick disconnect trigger control. If you'll notice, the majority of this kit is made out of some different material than what you're going to see being the industry standard. We've got our uh, plastic hose. We've got stainless steel crimps. We've got plastic cam locks. And then basically we've got stainless steel quick disconnects, plastic trigger itself, and everything going through basically the barrel is going to be as much stainless steel or plastic as possible. Why is that? Well, our goal is basically to purify the water so that we get the cleanest result possible. By keeping everything as uniform as possible with either stainless steel or with plastic, we don't give the water a chance to pick up any minerals. As you know, DI water is mineral hungry, it's mineral starving. If you run through something like a steel pipe, run through something like brass material, it's going to pick up contaminants, it'll degrade the metal, it'll also basically contaminate your water, negating the results that you're expecting to get with your DI canister. As you can see, this kit comes with pretty much everything that you need, including a small little spray bottle, a five gallon bucket of the ball soap, as well as 100 feet of discharge hose, so you can really do whatever you need to around your property in a convenient little way. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna talk about cleaning those panels up top and we'll see what this does. All right, so now that we're up on the roof, let's go over a few basic things. First and foremost, the main reason I'm on this side of the roof is strictly for camera angle. We want you guys to be able to see as much going on below me as possible. If I was on that side washing up like you normally would doing this process, then you wouldn't really get to see much. But the important thing here is you're gonna pay attention to the overall process of how everything gets washed. We are gonna soap everything with our boss mixture. As you know from some of our previous videos, that is a sodium metasilicate base. It's way more delicate on uh, pretty much anything that you're gonna be touching. In this case, this is normally some form of plexiglass or glass itself, depending on the quality of the panel. And basically what we're gonna do is lay a light mist over everything. It's a cooler day, so we're not gonna worry about pre-wetting. If it was a 100 degree summer day, we might wanna cool these panels down with just a light splash or mist of water, which would again be fine. We'll let that sit for about a minute, and then we're gonna take our brush and go ahead and scrub. Let's talk about some basic practices while we're doing this. First and foremost, be observant of the entire panel. If there's a crack going through this entire thing, making up a scenario, tree branch falls on top of it, cracks the panel, homeowner's probably not gonna know because that branch fell and then dropped down to the ground. If you see it, bring it to their attention, take some photos, it's probably best to skip that panel during the cleaning process. Number one, the glass itself is probably gonna need replaced anyway. Number two, that panel may be in need of repair. And number three, you may do more damage by sitting there flooding it with uh, any kind of solution that you'd be using or even just the DI water going through the panel itself. Uh, the next thing to take note of is really what it is that you're cleaning. If you're cleaning a whole bunch of dirt, debris, and just crap and gunk, figure out where that's coming from because that's going to affect the quality of your panel and how much energy that basically targets back into your home. When you're looking over the rest of this, some other things to really take note of, just because you're up here, is everything still bolted to the ground? Not the ground, the roof, excuse me about that. Is the electrical that's running off that conduit line, is that still in good shape? Is there anything extremely rusted? Is there any exposed electrical? All that stuff, just because you're up here, especially if you're a contractor doing this for a homeowner, it's really nice to be observant of, cognizant of, and then talk to the homeowner about some additional services that they may need done. Even if you're not the electrician, it's really nice to point those kind of things out. Take it from me, homeowners love hearing that kind of stuff from a contractor, especially if you're not trying to sell them anything. We're gonna go ahead and get started. The process is gonna be the same, no matter if you're on the top or bottom of the panels for the actual cleaning. What you're going to do is take your uh, spray bottle of Boss, Need to adjust that a little bit just to get a nice finer bead and we're going to soap up our panels if you saw on the bottom of some of these we've got a decent amount of buildup as far as lichen goes and then the panels themselves are pretty filthy 
The story I got from the homeowner is that these panels are roughly 10 years old. Um, we're making that number up simply based on the rest of the work that's been done around the property. The homeowner only acquired this house within the last five years, so they don't really know exactly where we're going. That said, the homeowner, or at least the current one, has never taken the time to get these cleaned properly. What that means is we've got at least five, if not possibly 10 years worth of buildup going across the surface, and basically that's affecting the efficiency of each panel. What I'm gonna do for you guys on camera is clean, uh, let's say we're gonna clean half of these. We'll clean the top one and these uh, other two that I'm cascading down to. We're just gonna clean these and see how they look compared to the dirty ones, and then we'll talk a little bit more. So let's go ahead and finish out that process. And as I'm getting down to this one, you'll see that there is way more dirt and buildup right here. I would assume that that's simply because of the tree that's sitting right there. So let's go ahead and get this soaked up like our other panels. All right, and we're just gonna let that sit off camera for, I don't know, maybe two or three minutes and we'll pick this conversation right back up. All right, so we let that sit for about two minutes now. Um, basically, all you're looking at right here is the suds have all but completely dissipated. Where it's a little bit heavier, where it stopped running, you'll see it down at the bottom lip. That's perfectly fine. What we're gonna do now is take our boar's hair brush. We're gonna scrub everything. Just give it a nice agitation. And the goal, before we move on to the next panel, is make sure that there's no suds whatsoever. Because what'll happen is those suds will dry and leave like a haze. One, they'll be harder to clean next time. And two, that in itself can also reduce the efficiency of your panel. I'm standing up just because I'm comfortable with it. Feel free not to replicate that part on your own. You can, of course, disconnect the extension. But we're going to go ahead and pick this up and see what I'm talking about. So basically, I'm just squeezing the trigger, letting this brush do as much work as possible. I don't know how much you can see on camera, but there's all kinds of filth that's casually coming off of this. Real important to get all those edges. Scrub everything a couple times. Get a nice thorough agitation. Scrub, final rinse, all that good stuff. I'm gonna pause that and zoom in just because it's our first panel that we're cleaning. Daniel, if you don't mind zooming in on this panel, you can see a pretty clear difference. It may look like a shadow on camera, but what's my right side of this has come completely clean. It's way less dark than the other side. And all that was was a little bit of organic matter that eventually built up so much on the surface it just completely reduced the efficiency. So we'll go ahead and keep on scrubbing. If we zoom back out. All right, now final rinse. You'll notice there are no real suds coming off. You may see the occasional bubble. That's strictly because of air in the line and how it's doing. It's important to note when working with DI water, if I splash like this, any aeration or agitation in the line will actually impact the final clean. So your rinse, as soft as possible, working down the surface. Let's keep on moving. One of the other things you can't really see on camera, I can feel the difference in resistance between the clean side and the dirty side. It's pretty drastic. And again, there's all kinds of stuff coming off of this panel. All kinds of organic crap, algae, glowio caps with magma, any other cyanobacteria that's gonna be common in whatever region it is that you're working. You're gonna see all that stuff on these panels just like you'd see them on a roof. All right, so we're obviously not going to wait around on camera for these to dry, but I will pause this one and we'll come back to it later. You can already see just because this was cleaned how drastic of a difference it is. Imagine the impact over time. Sun's coming down. These side of the panels are getting more sun directly to the panel itself, whereas this has a layer of dust, algae, all that crap we talked about baking onto it, reducing the efficiency. So let's continue cleaning and we'll see our results when they're finished cleaning. All right, so we're on a new section of panel. We've only got four panels here, so this seemed like a good time to talk. We're nice and open in the sun. 
there's way less going on right here just because there's no tree blocking anything there's nothing falling down on a regular basis i can see there there's all kind of remnants of bird droppings you'll see a couple of haze marks that we'll point to on camera in a second um, just with everything that's going on but the question that we're going to talk about here is how often should we actually clean these panels i mentioned in the last segment that they hadn't been cleaned in up to a decade at least five years how often should you do them well if you talk to someone who installs solar panels like we did they said by contract most companies that install solar panels recommend cleaning four times a year well, that's almost impractical for most people just because it's not something you're going to pay to have done on that regular basis. So taking your time and doing your own maintenance is a really good way to save some money and still maintain the efficiency of them. If you do have a pressure washer, the same soap that we're using the boss would still be a good one that maybe we could hit these from the ground. And when we're washing our house, when we're washing our sidewalk or something like that, we could just downstream the same solution of soap onto here, let it sit for a few minutes, rinse it off, and get at least some surface, mist, uh, surface dirt off and still try to maintain them on a regular basis. The scrubbing part really comes into play when they've been neglected. If they're not being maintained, that's when you really need to bust out a brush and really uh, work wonders on this. We'll go ahead and get a nice shot of what this looks like right now. Same exact process. We're going to soap up the entire thing with boss, and then we'll follow through with giving it a nice cascading rinse and go from there. So go ahead and uh, check out what we've got going on, and we'll see what our end result is. Right, guys so as you can see we just pretty much wrapped up solar cleaning with the exception of these three panels here this was the first segment that we shot and focused on if you remember i cleaned these three as the first test demonstration to give you an idea of our process and what we're doing and then i showed you some more process work as we went around the rest of the building in total we've cleaned well after these three we'll have cleaned 65 panels along with six skylights that we just kind of threw in just because they were up there i actually didn't notice them when i was walking around the job earlier otherwise i would have pointed them out um, but basically what you can see is we have a significantly cleaner section here than we do there. What this is going to translate to is a better return on investment for the homeowner. They're going to get more efficiency out of these panels. In theory, they could even last longer just because they're not going to get scuffed up. Each time you clean them, you're knocking off a layer of dirt. But if you don't keep up with them on a regular basis, like we saw in some of the corners in the back, the buildup is even more severe, specifically in our region that's going to be seen on the northern side. And basically, there's a limit to how much you can pull off just because you can't go as aggressive with this as you could, say, with the pressure washer on the side of a building or even if you were doing a standard roof cleaning job. We're going to go ahead and wrap up cleaning these three panels, but you get the idea of what it is that we're doing. The other part that we just kind of want to mention is from a homeowner's perspective, these are good tools to have because you can do some other work around the property, like the glass that you see around any windows that you have or any sliding doors. The other aspect of this, if you're a contractor and looking to get into it, it's a relatively low cost startup kit for really getting into this type of cleaning. And that can evolve later as time goes on. Anybody that does window cleaning work knows that this is an easy add on to the service. It's something additional that gives you, we'll say benefit of going with you as the contractor, as opposed to the homeowner going with another contractor because you offer these type of services that eventually can grow into everything as far as like solar uh, solar farm cleaning or if somebody has a solar field in the backyard there's all kinds of revenues that can be generated just based on this type of particular service alone so we hope that you guys like what you saw uh, we'd love your feedback in the comments section below feel free to like and subscribe this is dirtkiller.com let's kill some dirt <laughs> <laughs>